Temperature, 1, 4, Celsius. Dew point, 9er. Altimeter, 3, 0, 2, 0. 0, 2, 0. Alrighty. Back to our checklist. Altimeter set, DG, 3, 4, 0. Close. Pretty close. Park and brake, tow brakes. We'll check them when we roll. Positive control system. We'll check that when we move to. Check our... That's good, okay. Temps are coming up. We got a long taxi. Prop control is where I want it. We'll do a run up when we get down there. Let's get our flight plan in. Send that to the panel. Preview it. That's correct. Activate that flight plan. They're set to go. Alright, quick check around. A little bit of throttle. He's rolling. There she goes. We'll check our brakes. They work. And Berkeley County traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey on the ramp, taxiing out to runway 5, Berkeley County. 2711 Whiskey, oh. winds from 010 at 3 knots, altimeter is 3020, and we currently have one report in the pattern. Thanks, Noah. <sighs> Everybody here is so nice. I love it. All right, so welcome back to another video. A lot's happened even since the last video. I'm trying to put out video every week, and even with that, so much is happening. So, just got back from Chicago on Tuesday. Today is Saturday, it's Saturday morning. And um, so much happened on that trip in general, but even with just the flying, so much happened on that trip that I have to make it its own video. Um, I'll tell you guys that it was it was not an in, like an enjoyable flight. It was like working. It's very stressful, and a lot happened. And actually, we had to make three, well, one emergency landing and two semi-urgent emergency landings for <laughs> for one trip. That's insane. I don't think I've ever made an emergency like landing before. Yeah, that'll be its own video. I'll make a whole video on on flying to Chicago and why I'm probably not going to do that again until my boys are older and <laughs> and can appreciate the uh, seriousness of flying an aircraft. So. There's that. But today, what we're going to go over is something that um, I think is pretty interesting. Uh, we're going to go over some of the costs of general aviation. So the one we're going to cover in this video is going to be insurance. You don't have to insure an airplane. It's not like a vehicle. You can buy an airplane and fly it with no insurance um, if you want to. Uh, I chose not to do that. I insured my aircraft, and um, I went from a Cessna 150, which my insurance was $780 a year, um, for that 150, and I insured it for I think thirty thousand dollars, something like that, um, to a complex aircraft. So I went from a Cessna 150 to this airplane, a Mooney M20E 1966, uh, which is complex. It's not high horsepower; it's only 200 horsepower, so it's not considered high horsepower. High horsepower is anything over 200, um, but it's obviously complex, uh, variable pitch prop, obviously has flaps, and I have retractable landing gear. So um, that was something I knew was going to suck. I was like, well. I mean, I gotta make the switch sometime. I gotta eventually move into one of these aircraft, and no matter when I do it, you're not gonna have any time in that aircraft, so um, it's going to be expensive. So we'll, we'll go over those costs. I have all the uh, actual real-world costs written down here. Um, but first, we're gonna get in the air and get up to our cruising altitude and head down to Beaufort today, which is just a quick hop, 20 minutes. But that's perfect for video. All right, down here at runway five. All right, we'll hold short. I saw a guy land, and he's off. Okay. All right, bringing the mixture a little bit here. Bottle's coming up. There's 1,700. Fuel pressure, manifold pressure, both look good. RPMs are holding good. Temperatures are coming up down here. Ammeter's looking good. Fuel gauges and suction are good. Here comes two left. There it is, not more than 150. Two right, one left. Not more than 150, not more than 75 in between. And one right, and we're good. Here comes the prop. Get some oil in there. There's one. We saw the manifold pressure go up. Here's two. RPM should go down. It did. And then we're looking for oil pressure down here. And there it goes. And there's a successful run-up. Suction, left and right mags, prop, 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 and throttle. We're good. Uh, for takeoff check, flight controls. Of course, we check those. And those are free and correct. The stabilizer trim, I checked that already. Check it again. We're good. Flaps, one. Make sure we'll set that when we get out there. Prop is already full. Call flaps are open. Power boost is closed. Electronic fuel pump coming on. Strobe light, beacon, nav, landing. Strobe light, beacon, nav, landing. Seatbelts are on. Door, check that. Story in the next video about the door. 
window. Retraction lever, we have... Oop, see, that's why you check. Seatbelt shouldn't be loose. What the hell happened there? All right, on takeoff, my engine's going to die. When it does, I'm going to push forward, no hesitation, and find a place to land immediately. Um, if I'm not at 50 miles an hour by the halfway point, or by the time I glance back at my airspeed indicator after checking those instruments, we're going to board the takeoff. Alrighty, we are good to go. One final check of everything without looking at a checklist. We're going to take off five. Yep. Left crosswind, left downwind, depart off the downwind. I like it. I like staying in the pattern for a little while after takeoff. Okay, final's clear. Extra's coming in. Here we go. Berkeley County traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey taking off. Runway 5 will be departing off the downwind to the southwest, Berkeley County. Final is still clear. It's our runway. There's nobody on it. And here we go, guys. Okay, there's full throttle, pressures are good, RPM is good, engine instrument's still on the green, airspeed's alive, and there's 65. A little bit of back pressure, rotate. Okay, there's a positive rate, gear's coming up. Gear's up and locked. And we're going to pitch forward for 120 miles an hour. Got some birds in front of us. Missed them. That's why you look outside the cockpit. There's 120, here comes 400 feet. There's 500, we're coming back on the power to 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Should bring you back to 25 squared, and it does. 700 feet. Berkeley County traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey's left crosswind for runway 5, Berkeley County. I'm flying with ah, congestion right now, which every time I get congested, I say, ah, I'm not going to fly. Uh, and then I do anyways, like an idiot. Oh, God. And Berkeley County traffic Winnie 2711 Whiskey's left downwind for runway 5. We'll be departing off the downwind to the southwest, Berkeley County. Every time I get congested, I always say I'm not going to fly because uh, one time I did it and I uh, actually had to go to the hospital because my ear got like totally messed up. They had almost had to put tubes in my ear, but antibiotics ended up helping. helping. Um, and then I don't learn my lesson. My drive to fly an airplane exceeds my desire not to have. Pain. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so there's our downwind run. Everything is still looking really good. I feel comfortable leaving the pattern. The Berkeley County traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey, departing off the downwind runway 5, head out to the southwest, the last call, Berkeley County. Okay, so here we go. Here are the real world numbers of my insurance. Um, so, first thing I'll say is I knew that the insurance was going to be bad, so that was another thing I factored into the cost. Um, so, I had like a total budget for airplane, and that included airplane, training, insurance, um, whatever else. Okay, so when I when I switched to this airplane, I had 190 hours total time, zero time retracts, zero time complex. So um, that hurt me. Um, I, knew, I knew that was going to be why it was so much. So the total premium for the year was $2,602. So... When I call that, says, so, yep, for the next year, your insurance is going to be $2,600. But I asked him, I said, look, I'm going to build hours fast. Um, I'm going to pay quarterly, which ended up costing me like 20 bucks extra a year, so who cares? I'm going to pay quarterly, and then I'll just call back and update my hours, and then you know my insurance will go down. They said, yeah, you can do that. What they didn't tell me is that you need to call like a month before your bill is due, because if they send you the bill, they can't go back. So I didn't know that. They didn't tell me. But that's tip number one in this video. If you guys do make this switch over to a complex aircraft, the best thing you can do is ask your insurance company when the next drop is going to be. Uh, I didn't ask that. I asked it this time when I called, but I didn't ask initially. Right? When is the first drop going to be? How many hours do I have to have um, for the, to get that first drop? And if you're going to reach that, that threshold before your next bill, then um, call them back and update your hours. Uh, but they didn't tell me that. So... Anyway, my first payment was 650 bucks. This next payment that's coming due in three weeks is another 650 because they didn't tell me to call ahead. Um, so that's a bummer. But when I called them back, I called them like a week ago, or two days ago rather, and I updated my hours. So now I have a total of 260 hours total time. So it was 190 when I bought the plane, 260 now, three months later. Um, 72 hours of retract time, complex time. Yada, yada. I don't have my IFR yet. That would have helped. But with the 72 hours of retract and 260 total hours, got my payment down from 650 to $560. So savings of 90 bucks on that. 
but again, then I asked them, I said, okay, well, when's my next drop going to be? And they said, it's going to be at 125 hours of retrack time, and that'll, you know, assuming all that time will be in this plane, that'll be when I reach 313 hours. So I've got another 50, almost 60 hours to go. I probably won't reach that by December, um, just because I've got an annual coming up in, in December as well. Um, so the plane will be down for that. Um, and I just, 60 hours is a lot of flying um, in a month, so, or two months. Some of the things I asked is, well, how do I save more money? And they said, well, if you get your IFR certification, which I'm working on, um, that's another 10% saving. So, like, what was that, 242 bucks I'll save. Um, and then the next one is at if I, at one year, if I have zero claims on the aircraft, which I haven't made any yet, um, then it's another 10% savings. So another 230 240 bucks, so another 500 bucks savings. So it is going down quite a bit, about $1,500 I'm able to save. And like I said, I knew I knew the cost was going to be high. I knew that that was going to be a big deal. Um, and there's really no way around that unless you don't insure the aircraft. Obviously, the hull value that you insure the aircraft for dictates the price uh, of your insurance premium. I insured the plane for $55,000. So basically, I insured it for like a really nice truck, <laughs> essentially, is how I always say it. Whenever people say, oh, how do you afford an airplane? I'm like, oh, that's a nice F-250 you're driving. <laughs> Just don't do that, and you can have an airplane. Um, anyway, so yeah, um, twenty six hundred bucks for the year, 100, 190 hour pilot. That's what it's going to cost you in twenty twenty two. Premiums always go up every year; they go up. Um, this has been actually a bad year for general aviation. Um, we've had a lot of crashes. I think September set a record for the most deaths in general aviation, um, which is horrifying. But sad to say, it's not that surprising. I don't, I don't know how to say it. You can become a private pilot without knowing all that much. Uh, you pretty much just have to pass a couple of like, ground reference maneuvers, know how to land and take off in good weather, basically, and pass your check ride. Um, and then they give you a license, and you can go buy a plane like this and um, fly it and put people in the back of it and load it incorrectly. And I mean, there's so much to think about. It's crazy. The uh, it's crazy how little you have to know as a private pilot to uh, fly an airplane. It's pretty scary. Um, anyway, we're only eight minutes away from our destination. Pretty cool. I've only used three and a half gallons. I like going places where I only use that much. But yeah, man, insurance is a real cost. Um, it's definitely something you need to factor in if you're going to make that switch from a, you know, something like a Cessna, a simple aircraft like that to to an aircraft like this. But what I tell people is, I mean, if you're planning to fly, and I am, people always ask me, oh, Tommy, you want to fly for a living? Dude, yes, that's the whole goal of all this. That's why I'm doing, that's why I'm spending my money on airplanes and training, I want to fly. Newsflash. <laughs> um, I want to fly. I want to be a professional pilot, and that's that's all I want to do. Um, I can't wait to not sit at a desk every day and um, fly airplanes. That's that's what I want to do. That's what I'm gonna do, um, and that's what I'm pursuing. So anyway, that's the goal. So I knew I have to make the switch eventually. Anyways, you have to do it sometime. It doesn't matter how long you put it off. You might be able to build hours, but if those hours aren't within an airplane with retractable gear and a variable pitch prop, that's not really going to help you all that much. If you have 500 or 600 hours in a, um, a Cessna 150, I don't know how much that would have helped me. Uh, maybe a little bit, but they're still going to you know, knock you for not having the retract time. That's how I looked at it. I was like, it's a cost I'm going to have to incur eventually, just like training, just like anything else, so I'm going to do it. But that's how, that's how I justified it in my head, and that's how I justified it to my wife. I love Saturday morning flying, man. I hope the cameras outside are on and picking this up because Charleston's flat, but damn, it is beautiful flying over all these intercoastal waterways. Just amazing. By the way, it's not lost on me how insanely lucky and fortunate that I am that I'm in a freaking airplane, which I didn't think I'd be able to do until I was like 60, 70 years old until I retired. Um, and I'm flying over Charleston, South Carolina, which I never thought I'd live. I'm from the Midwest. Um... And I'm flying an airplane over the ocean. It's like, what? It's, I just can't even believe it. So sometimes I have to like check myself and be like, dude, what are you doing right now? You're flying an airplane over the ocean? Who are you? I'm a nobody. Just freaking lucky dude. Beautiful wife, beautiful kids. Live in America. <laughs> I'm so freaking lucky. So fortunate. Okay, airport's in sight. Autopilot's been working great lately. This autopilot's from 1966. And it's, it works off of vacuum um, diaphragms in the wings and in the tail. And it freaking works, dude. Deeper traffic, Mooney 27, the 1-1 Whiskey. Five miles to the east. Uh, 
on the 45 to enter right downwind, runway 07 Buford. Okay, gas on the tank I want, undercarriage is where I want it right now. Mixture and proper where I want it right now. Switches are set. And seatbelts are on. And Buford traffic, Mooney 27 to 1, 1 Whiskey is on left, or excuse me, right downwind, runway 07, full stop, Buford. Okay, so we're below gear speed already, which is where I want to be. Here's the numbers, gear's coming down. Gear's down, locked, pulled, and indicating power comes back. Prop comes in, flaps first notch. It's going to nose over, you're going to trim it for 100. All right, gas on the tank I want undercarriage is down and indicating mixture's coming in. Prop is set, switches are set, seatbelts are on. There's a first comes check. Be for traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey's right, ba right base for runway 07. Buford. I'm going to put my last notch of flaps in before I turn. Trim it. And Buford traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey's turning final runway 7, full stop. Buford. Okay. Yep, there's my wind from the left. Exactly what I expected. Bird there. No factor. I like to see 80 right over the fence here. I'm at 85, so I am fast. Runway's made, though, so we don't need any throttle. Number's gone. Bounced it. That was interesting. So I'm not going to cut that out of the video. Um, that landing was not hard, but terrible. I bounced the plane. Um, that's my worst landing I've ever had in this airplane, actually. Yeah, I'm going to leave that in the video, but I mean, I'm going to have to analyze that. I, I was a little fast, but um, I let it plane over the runway a little while. Um, maybe a little gusty. I don't know. Um, what I expected to happen was I was thought I was slow enough that when my wheels touched, um, I would sit sit down on the runway, and it didn't do that. It bounced. So that's very interesting, and um, yeah, that was my worst landing ever. So you guys get to see it. Um, and even my worst landing ever was not terrible, so I'm pretty happy with that. Never call clear till you are clear, even though people do all the time. And yeah, Buford traffic, Mooney 27, one of the clear runway 7, taxi into fuel, Buford. Another Mooney. Nice. Similar to mine. That looks like a C, though, because you can see the carburetor box on the front. Power off everything except for the audio panel, because we're talking to you. Lights come off. Back up so it runs good. Back down to a 1,000. And out comes your... Fueled up, went to the bathroom, feel pretty good. Um, I love this airport, man. It's a beautiful flight here. The people are amazing. I talked to the uh, line guy here. Um, just nicest guy ever, just shooting the shit. Amazing FPO, they just redid that. Just great facilities here at uh, Buford. I think it's Buford Exec Airport. K-A-R-W, but love it here. Awesome people, awesome airport. So hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you guys are interested in this kind of content, stuff like you know real world costs of what it actually costs to fly and operate an airplane, let me know in the comments and I'll make more videos like this. But I'm gonna end this one here. Um, if you guys like it, don't forget to like, subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram if you want to, all that jazz. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.